He was arrested by the same bastards who shot him down, and later was brought to a military base for interrogation. That pilot was me. Name? My name is Fox. Jesse Fox. You don't seem to be Russian. Russian? Me? You were piloting a Russian aircraft two hours ago. I also drive a Toyota, and I'm not Japanese. All right, Mr. Fox. Before arresting you, I'm obligated to write down a report with your version of the facts. So tell us what the hell you were doing in that heavily armed Soviet helicopter. It's a long story. Sergeant, bring us some coffee. Yes, sir. Wakowski, bring the lieutenant some coffee. Yes, sir. Well, Mr. Fox, we have plenty of time. Explain what happened. In 1972, a crack commando unit threw me in a prison for a crime I didn't commit. You're under arrest for a crime you didn't commit! I promptly escaped from a maximum security stockade to the underground, trying to survive from these soldiers of fortune. Let's start from the beginning. How did you escape from that cell? Piece of cake. I just had to write a note. A note? Where'd you get the paper from? I used toilet paper. I see. And how did you find a pen? A pen? I was in a dirty, grimy cell. Not in an office. I wrote the note with a rusty wire, using my own blood as ink. <laughs> I scratched my arm with the wire and got to work. It wasn't easy. The toilet paper tore under the pressure of the bloody wire. Those bastards gave us cheap paper. One ply, unscented and unpatterned. Why did you break the toilet? Why not grab the paper like a normal person? You know how prison is. It's kill or be killed. And I wasn't going to be killed by some dirty toilet. Hey, you moron! Holy Jesus! You schmuck, do you really think I'd be stupid enough to kill myself? Kill myself? <laughs> guard locked in the cell. Then I threw away the key and got out of there. Mr. Fox, what about the noose? Where did you get that from? Where did I get the noose? Are you seriously asking me that? I am, Mr. Fox. I'll tell you later. <laughs> when leaving the cell, I found myself in a prison yard surrounded by some buildings. There were piles of boxes and other stuff here and there. And the ground was plain dirt. Oh, and it was night. That 
box contained some filthy cloth scraps. I made some handy bandages to prepare for when I would get wounded. Bad news, dirty cloth rags don't heal you, they just stop the bleeding, and I ain't got time to bleed. Good news, I could reuse these rags as much as I wanted. Good dirty cloth is hard to come by. I thought everyone would be asleep at night, that it was safe to escape. I was dead wrong. I noticed the presence of two guards on the night shift. jailed for a crime I didn't commit. Do you know how to get out of here? Try to escape through any sewer. There must be one nearby, cause it stinks and it's hot. Once outside, move along at night time and sleep during the day. What about you, Colonel? I've been tortured. My legs don't make it. But if you bring me a radio, I can help you escape. Hold on, Harris. Are you sure you heard him say Alan Harris? Yes, sir. Saw him yesterday. Look, Mr. Fox, Colonel Harris died a month ago in an ambush. Well, it's the name that stubborn old man gave me. I see. I'll write down in the report that you talked to Colonel Harris after his death. Continue your story. As I was saying, I searched for a radio to bring in. <laughs> Under some crates, I found my salvation. A sewer hole. There was no ladder and I couldn't see the bottom. I needed to find a ladder or rope if I wanted to go down. <laughs> took a coin off the guard. Money? What'd you intend to spend it on? I suspect there's no shops open for an escapee on a midnight run. Who said anything about spending? I used it to distract soldiers. I quickly found out that guards love picking up free coins off the ground. Hey! 
Hey, a coin. I picked up the guard's radio. Without encryption, I knew other guards could listen in on my conversations with Harris. I see. You still haven't told me how you got that noose. I'll tell you later. As I was saying, I needed to find a special encryption circuit to install in the radio. the circuit. I just had to attach it to the radio. With the modified radio, I could speak to Harris with no one listening. Now, I just had to bring it to him. And the noose? Later. You stole a one-eyed man's patch? A one-eyed man that would shoot me without hesitation. Because it was his job, what you did was macabre and suggest you might have a fetish. Holy Jesus. Well, that patch turned out to be handy to create a lethal weapon. Paper. Can you bring me some? Here you are. Thanks, man. You saved my ass, literally. What the fuck? What sort of paper is this? It's only one ply, unscented, and unpatterned. It's the kind the prisoners use. Fuck, that's why their hands stink so much. By the way, who are you? I don't recognize your voice. I'm Lieutenant Marcus Stevenson. Lieutenant, you say? Sir, I apologize for my manners. I did not know your rank, sir. Relax, and clean up your rear guard well. Sir, yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you. 
I ran into a guard as I went in. Luckily, the guy was sleeping, and Bastard was going to have a rude awakening. <laughs> The lethal weapon you created with the patch was a slingshot? Sort of childish, don't you think? What were you gonna shoot? Pebbles? Depleted uranium balls. Three shots, and goodbye guard. With those first aid kits, I could disinfect and heal my wounds. Good news, those kits stopped any bleeding and also healed my wounds over time. Bad news, once you used them, they were gone. Oops. Do you have cigarette? <laughs> Tell them again. Of course. The Sarge says to the soldier, Someone sent you a blank letter. <laughs> the soldier says, It's from my wife, Sarge. <laughs> How do you know that, soldier? Because we argued and we know. <laughs> Escaping prisoner! <laughs> I was injured and losing blood. I had to heal that wound before I bled to death.
I reached a special place where I found something. What, Mr. Fox? It was... What was it? Damn, I can't remember. Oh, yeah, now I remember. It was that damn grenade guy. I wanted to punch the hell out of him, but I couldn't reach him. Why couldn't you reach him? There was a ditch. A simple ditch stopped you? This was no mere simple ditch. It was full of tentacles and blood-stained spears that moved up and down and bony arms that tried to grab me. And deadly okay, 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 Mr. Fox. I get it. You couldn't reach him. For your own good, I'll not include the spears, arms, and tentacles in my report. Now, Mr. Fox, please continue your story. All right. The fight began as he tossed the first grenade at me. Running away, I'll be stupid, but not a coward. defeated I searched the grenade guy wait wasn't there a ditch I used the bridge what bridge but you told me you couldn't cross the ditch because I didn't see it at first I was completely focused on my opponent the grenade guy I see through channel one as soon as I find another. Good luck, son. And Godspeed.
With the radio encrypted, I could talk to Harris. I wouldn't have been able to escape without his help. I hate to admit it, but the grumpy old man gave some good advice. Colonel, do you copy? I copy. I found a rope to go down the sewer. Then you're not down yet? What the hell are you waiting for? I'm on it, Colonel. I couldn't see the bottom of that hole, but I anchored the rope and I went down. Ha <laughs> ha